Morning, Jamie. How are you? <laughs> Morning. How are you? That was an increase in well, we've we've reached a hundred episodes. Yes. And now we're starting into the next 100. Next and 100. So I feel and like I, I can't turn on the lights in the house. No, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> why is why is it is it too hot? Are you no. on a yes? Well, it is very hot. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, well, I figured we start 101 off with some formality, formalness, formalness, and a new a new prop. Yes. So I have, I think I showed you this before, my 3D printed owl that I thought was fun as the first print on my 3D printer. But we'll they see are how not long what they seem. It's not what it seems. And we'll see how long it sits up there. And hopefully if we, I, I would even approach. I would even entertain a comment on YouTube that says, take that damn owl off the microphone because it's out of focus. I, I'm going to challenge somebody to just say something about it. <laughs> Bury it in the clip. Because yep, we, have, we have listeners and, uh, and watchers <laughs> and uh, lurkers and spelunkers, and I'm sure they're out there. Out there. So anyway, this is to all the fans. And all the fans that have that know the inside joke of the owl, yeah, and 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 the fact that they're they've been with us for a hundred and and years to the next. Cheers to cheers to the next. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's what what's the coffee of the day today? Well, I ran out. I had to drop Danielle off to. She's going to sell cheese with her sister, so I suppose that makes her a monger for the day. So at the farmers market and. Next to the cheese shop is our, my favorite coffee spot called Penny's Cafe. And I actually didn't ask what they, uh, I'd have to take a guess, but I, I just got a large coffee. And they they only use Rootless, our local Flint guys. So I got to imagine it is probably the, the damn fine cup of coffee, which would tie into our owl. I, I think that's appropriate. Yeah, probably just pulled you in. Just go with that. <laughs> what about yeah, you? I, I'm I, I'm having the Austin local cuvee coffee. Now is cu cuvee the the brand? Cuvee, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah, you've so, had some of their stuff before. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is this is their dark roast. They they call it West Pole, and it's but it's a smoother dark roast. A lot of a lot of dark roasts can be kind of a little bit bitter. Mm -hmm. or on the bitter side which i don't mind necessarily but yeah lately i've i've been having like sort of a, a run of lighter roast coffees i don't know why maybe it's maybe it's the heat maybe it's in my brain but had this on the shelf and and decided that it would be nice to have a, a much darker richer kind of roast for today cool it's a nice little bag too it's got a nice color Oh yeah, yeah. Their like, branding, like, their branding like is, is, yeah, their branding's pretty nice. Yeah. Gotta say, yeah. Smell this cup. Yeah. Oh, is that like the little? Yeah, it's the, the little, little thing. Yeah, the little thing you, in the back. Yep. The the mystery mystery plastic. <laughs> Regis. Cool, man. So there's a lot of thoughts I've had since creating or posting our hundredth episode, and it's just been all positive and fun just to think about that you've you and I have done this actually and we've gotten a few comments from friends on Twitter and Instagram or where whatever in passing and actually I've even crossed paths with some people that I didn't even think were listening and I'll, I, I can't remember exactly but the word is getting out there people are aware of what we're doing and we're having fun and and that's I think the, the key and so I'm going to start off before we were we we're kind of before recording, we we're warming up and maybe just catching up on life and going through ups and downs and different maybe highlights and yeah, lowlights. Might have had a little talk little about chip on, chips. Chip yeah, on your, now chips on, chips on look, shoulders. It's pretty even. Yeah, you look. I think we're we're all set. <laughs> but it's just been fun to do this. So I I just wanted to say thanks again because we're now recording one hundred and one. And uh, we'll just keep going. Why yeah, not? One, one day, we, <laughs> one day we will reveal the the underlying motivation for all this. I'm just kidding. There's there is no underlying right. motivation for this. The subliminal. We, 
yeah, we might have a we might have a contest in our own brains of that we're you got to got to chase the chase that right. goal. But, right, right. But no, it, it, I I thank you as well. It's I've I've noticed a couple and have received a couple comments from folks as well. Where and everybody really keys on the fact that yeah, it's two friends talking about art, architecture, catching up, pop culture, and and we we enjoy it. So this is this is supposed to be fun. Yeah, thanks. And uh, I actually it causes me to think too about some new people we can invite on and talk about their sketches which we haven't done in a little while. And uh, there's some friends and friends of friends that I think would be uh, some interesting future future uh, collaborators. So we'll we'll have to brainstorm on that a little. We have to do a little work. Note to self. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a recorded note. So now it's, it's forever now. <laughs> so let's talk some sketches. Yeah, let's do it. So I have, oops. I, uh, let's see, here we go. Let me zoom in. So we've got, we, we decided we'll start with this, which is really a fun one. And we have a, another one. We're going to try and jump to two and do it pretty quick, right? So tell me about this. I mean, you've hashtagged Labyrinth and uh, an interesting little garden plan and also adjacent to a, a nice little silhouette of a, of a house or a small structure there. So where's this one coming from? This is a real project that's actually, this is one of those moments that I just, I wanted to share kind of in the, in the spirit of 101 for our episodes and sort of these little projects that could on these kind of brainstormed ideas that you're not really sure when you sort of send it off into the world, whether or not anybody's going to listen or like it uh, or enjoy it or appreciate it. And in this particular case, this is a small project, which is actually, it's a small intervention, but a really big project in, in terms of impact potentially for at least of importance for this community. So this is a small town just east of Aust Elgin, Texas, and they're known for brick manufacturing. They have a large brick manufacturing plant. They're part of the Acme family now. And but the mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of these towns would grow up around the rail. And so the building, the silhouette that you see in the background is actually their historic railway depot. Um, oh, cool. now, now turned into a museum. But it's it's a kind of a nice little one-story typical wood construction, low slung building, kind of at the intersection of the railroad tracks, kind of that crisscross through town. But at this location, this depot is, is at the edge of Main Street, kind of at the edge of their historic district. It's a National Register district. And the city is about to celebrate its sesquicentennial. Mm -hmm. And so as part of that, a lot of public dollars, a lot of public interest has gone into different aspects of infrastructure and to kind of get the city ready. And also to sort of see the city into the future. They've got a lot of development com coming out of Austin into their into their community. And so there's a lot of lot of great projects going on in and around town. And, and then they have this wonderful event coming up. And so the city saw it as a design opportunity to have a time capsule. No matter how you feel about time capsules as a concept, I have no idea. Don't ask me what they're putting in it because I don't know. But they they approached me and asked me if, if I would help them cite a location for the time capsule, as well as kind of you know, what is that space going to look like? And they had some initial ideas. And I share it here as sort of it took me a while and took me in com conversation with some other designers that I work with to iterate kind of some concepts of how do you create a public space with something that's super special. It's almost like a memorial, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's, you don't create a space that nobody goes to and enjoy. So I imagined just as, as a designer might, if a busload of school kids or a family were coming to this museum and, or guests or just a, people on a date, and they encountered a space that had a really intricate pattern on the ground and a little bit of whimsy. What would that do? Would they, would they stay a little while? Would they read a plaque? And so there was played with some, some abstract patterns, did a lot of sketches sort of in abstracting the landscape, figure field exercises, all the architecture 
kind of terminology mm-hmm. and then didn't like any of it, frankly. And then kind of walked away from it for a minute and then came back and thought, what about like a, what if this was sort of like a secret garden? And, and that kind of got me on this kind of idea of English labyrinths mm. and, and that was, that sort of unlocked kind of where this sketch was. Oh, that's cool. I, I mean, I think that's a good point about the process, right? Sometimes there's, you got to go through the motion, the, not the motions, but the, the, just the, the process through sketching or the tech, technical site plan strategizing. And then you move through all that and then you, the, the concept emerged. So it's like the, the center is where are they going to bury the, the time capsule? I mean, that's kind of neat. What's interesting is the, uh, you know, in, the, in, in 100, we were talking about the, uh, the memory marks space, which has a similar sort of tipping or this, this ellipse or curving bench wall. And it seems like there's maybe some influence in your space with, with the, the sort of elevation change of the, the, the wall, the bench and the floor and the, and, and then if I assume in integrating with brick as a material from a local, local recognition or local history, historical business presence, mm-hmm. business of the, yeah. And so actually it's, yeah, no, you're, cool. you're, you're, you're spot on and, and, and yeah, thanks for thanks for pointing that out because it's it's it really was it was it was clearly an influence that that space in Richmond that or excuse me in, in Charlottesville that I saw on the on my Richmond trip. It, it's obviously a very very different space for a very very different purpose, but it it is sort of about gathering, and and those kind of gathering spaces there's some natural geometries to that, and then the subtlety of the move that they did to integrate it into that landscape gave me a clue here with a struggle that I was having in terms of citing this. The the way the building, the depot is positioned, it's off grid to the rest of downtown. And because of the rail lines and sort of the, the edge of downtown that it sits on. And so there's some interesting pie pieces of landscape area that are basically decomposed granite. There's nothing in there. There's no benches, there's no plants. There's like a sign and that's it. And so there were sort of two natural spots, the one where you're seeing it here in the sketch, and then the one that I really liked, which was on the backside of the building, a much larger space. And because I felt like if if you had a patio or a plaza space back there or a piazza space back there, it would really integrate well with the interior of the building. I could mm-hmm. imagine the inside and outside being activated in a, in a really special way with the backdrop of the rail rail lines behind. But in talking to the uh, folks there, it, 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 that really wasn't going to be feasible. It, it, would, it would really miss the opportunity to celebrate it at the front door of the building. Mm-hmm. And they, their, their fear was that it would be almost forgotten about. And it really would become that sort of secret garden that everybody forgot about. And, and I think in this case, I, I was kind of happy that um, they kind of forced me into kind of rethinking the front door here. But in dropping that circle so that it sort of drops as it as it moves around the arc and drops the the brick changes in elevation and and really you st- starts to re-engage the ground plane it really is sort of the subtle nod to okay maybe i can walk out of this space and back into that future secret garden that maybe they'll develop as as a as another piazza space or at some later date yeah, well, I think that's that's great. I mean, that's a really smart move, and 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 also potential to allow the the experience or the occupant to to make their own function, make their own move through the space, or use it in their way. At least you're thinking in that potential. So uh, we well, have to listen, and 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 I think that the one one part of this to leave on is that come december this is going to be built and they're going to be burying a capsule so that's yeah exciting. cool yeah that's great yeah we'll we'll have to follow back up on that um because we have only a few more months till then so yeah whereas you can probably dig holes in texas in the winter unlike yes. michigan where... yeah. 
Right. So, well, we were all, we, we wanted to plan to talk also about this, which is maybe visually not a good segue, but however, chronologically, it, it sort of shows maybe the, the left brain, right brain, or two, two, two sides to, to Jamie's two pages to Jamie's sketchbook, I guess is, is a pun, <laughs> but the, is a fun one for me. Cause I always like the, when, when you, when you make these sort of abstractions and uh, they, they reminisce a lot of my undergraduate days, like soaking in morphosis monographs and things like that, Tom main drawings and so on and, uh, or everything from their office, but especially like these sort of, sort of arcing wedge shapes that are somehow, I don't know, there's something I can't, I can't, what's, I don't know what the word is, but it's basically always. You have an affinity for them. Affinity for this sort of shape and volume. I don't know. It, I mean, and also you, I used to see these a lot in some old morphosis follies and, and models and things like that. And so uh, anyway, so what, what, where well, is this somewhere or something? No. <laughs> and it, and it's and and it's it's I, I think it's kind of along the lines of what you were speaking of is that their work the Southern California School there and of of all those architects and 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 others I think their graphic influence on me like yourself was sort of at a made an indelible mark in, in terms of influence but I think that having worked on the project in Elgin where it's sort of thinking about space. And at the same time, not just thinking about space, but also trying to dream up program, you're, you're given kind of a, a little bit of a prompt and you're also having to imagine how people might use the space and then how the materials or the structure or the tectonics start to generate a design from that. In, in that case, I knew it was going to be built, but what it does is for me in my sort of creative mind is starts to send me on a path of thinking about follies and sculpture and uh, public art. And so when I don't have a site and I don't have necessarily a, a program prompt, a lot of sketches like this start to get generated. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is, this is one of those ones that can, gets born out of the interest in art and public space and folly and programless spaces that need mm -hmm. program. And so then it's an exploration of line and form and space and scale and order and trying to create some order in the space so that it's recognizable. And here, it, this is a, this is a fast drawing. This it's, it, there's an intricacy to it, but it's, it's really fast. And I think the telltale sign that it's fast is it's all one line weight. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it, it, it's a drawing that's seeking purpose and, and not necessarily starting out with one, which is a, a different kind of exercise. Uh, yeah. It's a challenge. I mean, but it's, it's one where that we've talked about before is where I try and challenge myself with some artificial rules. And when this particular case is, oh, wow, you've been thinking about public art and these spaces and, and follies and things okay, let's, let's get some of those ideas out on the page and let's only give ourselves 10 minutes to do it. Yeah, I, I see that. And I, it makes a lot of sense too, because you're, I think one thing to, to end on for me is, is the scale, right? Is trying to put your, your thought process into a particular scale of project. And just like you said in the beginning of the first sketch, which you're, it's a small public space, but it has an impact and a presence to the occupant, is a very different design scale to, to have your brain work in than, say, designing a stadium or an office building. I mean, those are much bigger, a, a stadium is a much bigger scale, but I mean, you're, the moves, the strokes, the things, the the gestures are are very different in both senses and both or both spec ends of the spectrum, and so uh, so I could see that, and it makes a lot of sense, and and I think we'll have a couple more as that we're going to talk about in the future that that, that that probably are still part of the same thought process. So, thanks a lot.